it's Play in the Shed Day and today's project involves a bit of welding, a bit of cutting, a bit of fabrication and even a little bit of lathe work. I've had my portable bandsaw for a while now and I'd like to make a stand for it. I use it mostly by hand for cutting steel but I reckon out of this pile of scrap here I should be able to make a stand. I've already made a bit of a start at it with the hook that um, hooks into the uh, handle at the top. So I've got some scrap of old hollow square steel and a bit of um, bent up flat bar and that should uh, be the main frame and the, and the hook. So there we've got a bit of a start. So I've got the back part of the frame, hook it under the handle and it's going to sit something like that so I'll need to make some feet for it and a few other bits and pieces. So on the sides uh, I want to put some pieces of steel just to hold it steady side to side. A couple of bits of scrap angle will do for this job. I'm going to eventually stick pieces of carpet on the faces of that steel so that there's carpet between it and the bandsaw. So I've just got a couple of bits of scrap to get the spacing right. So one bit of scrap on one side and then I can get the position of the other little foot that will hold onto the side of the bandsaw. As you can probably tell I don't have a particular plan in mind. I've just got a bit of an idea so I'm just sort of taking it as it comes um, and working a little bit at a time and working it out as I go. So far I'm only using up scraps so if it becomes a complete failure it won't be a complete failure. I'm going to use this angle for the feet it's been lying around for quite a few years and it's pretty grotty but I think it'll clean up enough for this project. Having a stand for the portable bandsaw will serve two purposes. One, it'll be a place to store it or hang it and the other will be for cutting out bits of steel when it's really difficult to hold it by hand in a vise like small pieces or pieces that um, need a curve on them etc. Okay, things are progressing okay. Now I've just got my small level here because I, I want the bandsaw to be sort of level, not angled. So I'll just mark that angle. But before I weld the feet to the back, back frame, I'm just um, drilling a hole in each end of these feet because I'll be screwing the stand to the bench. I love using the TIG welder for these projects because it's so clean, no spatter and very quiet. Here's one of the lovely TIG welds and even if I say so myself I reckon that looks alright. 
but I've realized that I haven't got the feet parallel by quite a lot. So I'm going to weld in a spacer, which I was going to do anyway. So a little bit of manipulation with the frame in the vise and Bob will be my uncle. The basic design for hanging the portable bandsaw is now complete and it looks like it's going to be a winner. So it's time to fit the plate. This is the only thing I had to buy and it was quite expensive. Prices of steel have certainly gone up. I'm removing the standard little plate because I want to modify that because I want to have a system of being able to secure that top plate to the bandsaw so it doesn't move around. So a little bit of paperator design will get me the two bits that I want to weld onto this plate. Because I'll then put two holes, one in each corner, then I'll fit studs to the main cutting plate and those studs will slide into those holes and I'll be able to screw the big plate down. So with the two little bits welded on. It's just a matter of cleaning it up with the flap disc on the angle grinder. Of course the large cutting plate will need a slot cut in it, so using a cut off disc on the angle grinder I'm just carefully making a nice straight slot. And then I'll just finish it off once it's on the bandsaw stand itself. Now I'm just using a strap to hold the on off switch on, and for the moment I'll just be turning on and off the bandsaw from the power point, which is right next to the bandsaw anyway. I may eventually wire up a switch that it's, that's attached to the stand, but probably not. But of course it's not something that I'd recommend you do. Anyway, I can now just finish off the cut on the bandsaw itself, so I've got a nice straight cut. And I've drilled a, a small circular hole at the end of that cut just to allow for chips. As I said, I want to secure this plate, but I want it to be easily removable. So now I'm just marking the two holes that I drilled in that original plate, and I'll drill through the top plate, and then I'm going to weld some studs into the bottom of this plate. And I've got some M8 stainless all thread for that. To get the all thread perpendicular to the plate, I've just temporarily screwed in a nut on top of that to get it just the right height. So I've got a little divot in the plate that I can fill up with weld and weld in the stud as well. These studs don't need to be very strong, so just a bit of weld on the top that glues them to the plate should be fine.
With the two threaded studs now welded in place, you can see now that it's an easy process of just sliding the plate on and down into the holes on the permanent little plate underneath and screwing the whole thing to the bench. Well, apart from the fact that I should be using a push stick for this little process, it looks like everything's going to work. I counted my fingers after the process and they all still seem to be there. Anyway, time to paint and I'm just going to use some of this silver gel to paint everything. Except for the face of the top plate, I won't be painting that at all. You can see here that I've got the fixing screwed onto those um, threaded studs and uh, you'll see later on that I've chucked those fixings and uh, built some better ones. I've polished up the top plate a bit and I'm just going to finish it with some WD-40. And that'll help to stop it from rusting. For obvious reasons, the top plate can't be painted. I'm on the home stretch now and I've got some pieces of this carpet cut out and contact adhesive painted on. So it's just a matter of sticking them all on protect the bandsaw when it's on the stand. Just like that. The new bottom plate will remain fixed whether I use it on the stand or manually. It's only the top plate that will be removable. And once I work out the highly technical bit of which way the plate goes round, <laughs> it easily slides onto the blade and into those holes, but obviously it'll need to be fixed. Now, I originally made these little fixings with some threads in them and I didn't like it. So I went back to the lathe and I'm just using aluminium because they don't need to be super strong. And I'm going to put some threads in some custom made thumb screws. So after drilling out, I just tap with an M8 drill tap, which is a nice easy job with, with these spiral taps. No mucking around with tap handles. I'm going to knurl one end of the thumb screws and then taper the other. Well, not so much taper as just uh, trim them down a bit just so that they look pretty. By now you'll be saying this is an awful lot of faffing around when you could just use a couple of nuts. And of course you'd be right. But this is fun and any chance to play on the lathe is worth taking. So far so good, and theoretically, those slum screws are finished. But why not go the extra mile and put some little divots around the thumb screws just to make them even easier to turn with my little fingers. And this is an excuse to play with the rotary table, so it's worth doing. These custom knobs look pretty good now and this might be an excuse to stop, but no, let's not stop here. Let's go even further, put it back on the lathe and just put a nice little chamfer on the top just to finish it off. Because as Blondie Hacks is fond of saying, chamfering is what separates us from the animals. And now, finally, yes, at last, we have a finished product, and of course I made two of them. And I reckon that looks better than a bought one, because after all, I wouldn't be able to buy one. That's it. Job's almost done. It's just a matter of securing the plate, 
with a couple of turns of the thumb screws to hold the plate secure and then I can give it another test and this time I'm using the proper process of using a push stick what a good boy this will save me having to remember how to count fingers when I finish the job one of the benefits of a nice stable platform is to be able to cut curves this isn't the sort of cut that's easy to do using the portable bandsaw in its portable mode. I'm using a Milwaukee blade on my bandsaw and as you can hear, you can hear the bandsaw complaining every time it comes around the join. I really didn't make a good job of joining that bandsaw blade. This exercise was to ensure that the portable bandsaw stayed portable. So, by removing the thumb screws, taking off the strap, it's now ready to be used as a proper portable bandsaw. When the cutting's finished, it can live on its stand. So why is this a better portable bandsaw stand? because the bandsaw remains portable and I made it.